you know, look at your next demand zone. You're talking about 10 points on the spies. Now, for now, these are just data points. For now, you could turn to them and say, well, we did hold here, when we did hold here, and we did hold here, and we did hold here. Again, the question is, is this time there? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a great uh, weekend. It is right now, let's see here, it's about a quarter to, it's about a quarter to nine, right? It's about a quarter to nine uh, Sunday morning. Uh, my kids have literally four basketball games within the next like six hours. So I'm going to be crazy busy today. Say it right. So uh, being a dad is the greatest thing in the world, except when you have 12 basketball games in a weekend. Uh, and then you have to kind of figure out where to pick your spots to get re uh, kind of refocused, recharged, and uh, uh, get going for the next week. And, you know, it's a very, very odd week last week. I think it was interesting. If you remember... Uh, if all you guys only just watched the weekend update, if you guys remember uh, last weekend, um, we were you know we were faced with a with a pretty interesting scenario. This is the first time the SPYs closed uh, below the rising support, and you know this is where we turned around and said, look, you got to be a little bit cautious, just because again when stocks trade from channels from supply to supply and especially from demand. Uh, to demand, you know, you have to be flexible to trade both sides of the market. And the way the week started was a really premium week. We were, we were prepared for Monday's session. Uh, markets sold off very aggressively. Tech gapped up, got stuffed into supply. They sold it off. Came Tuesday, exactly the same hap same thing happened, and the spies improved on their back testing. And the one point when you have to look at technical analysis in the most purest form is you believe that it will get to the next supply zone. But sometimes we always talk about uh, the one thing that the stocks and charts don't correlate at times. And there's an old adage that says charts don't lie, but sometimes they don't tell the truth either. And what I mean by that is technical analysis doesn't need to be there in one day, right? Uh, your validation doesn't have to take place in an hour or a minute uh, for something to kind of transpire. And the way the market played out this week, um, there was a lot more sitting and waiting for collection of data than anything else. So, for example, we were again we were prepared for Monday sell-off, right? We caught the tech sell-off. Uh, a lot of names, all of technology got really, really killed. If you go back to again all of last week's videos, starting from Monday and Tuesday, you kind of see what we what I was thinking. So, Monday and Tuesday, really aggressive sell-offs right at the open. Tech got stuffed into technology. Wednesday became kind of a very odd area, okay? And for all you guys who remember, especially the queues, and this was kind of a very, very important point. So the queues started to sell off on Friday, on Wednesday, right? And if you guys remember, 324 was a, a 374 was a monster, monster area. And the problem with Wednesday's session was we were sitting literally at 324, which was literally the rising. 20 day moving average on the queues um and we sat there for three hours we literally sat there for three hours the bulls were defending 324 the bears are trying to seize control of 324 and what what made that day kind of impossible right think about it who would actually knowing that there's a, a line in the sand at 324 how can you justify going long on support and then how can you justify going short knowing there is support? So we sat there literally uh, from the open till about lunchtime watching this, this, this clash of the titans who would get control over the 374 area. And the more really important area part of that was we needed to know what was going to happen next. So if you guys remember, I, I literally went to lunch uh, at noon came back at one, the bulls not only held that 324 level, they closed it pretty much at the highs of the day, which was setting up, right? Which was setting up when you have a, you know, when you have a really good hammer 
uh, off of rising support was setting up a really good potential for the next day. So now we knew the bottom of the channel here, and now we knew that the bulls needed to reclaim the 10 day moving average. So if, you, if you've been watching these videos for a very long time, you know how important uh, the 10 day moving average it is for me. Uh, it really does show you uh, the birth of the trade. So the five days is the shortest sentiment, but the 10 day moving average will dictate what should happen next. And the one thing that happened or didn't happen on Thursday was we couldn't get through the 10 day moving average. So what should have been a progression, a build upon what the bulls did the previous day, holding that rising 324 level, it never transpired. And slowly but surely we started kind of fading the day. No fear though, right? Absolutely no fear. But they started fading the day only to rally it up the next day and to improve on the previous day's session. So logically going into Friday's session and we closed right at the 10 day moving average, I was probably, I, I, I don't think I could have been any more buy biased going into Friday's session. Um, I loved Amazon, I loved, um, I loved Netflix. Actually Netflix actually kind of improved on, on the session. Um, I loved Tesla. I loved Nvidia. I was really technology long biased. I wasn't long overnight, but I was long biased. And all I knew is, you know, I knew we had to just confirm this 10 day moving average and the market was going to absolutely rally. And the problem is, and this is where sometimes again, where our research doesn't kind of match up to our reality. And we started seeing slowly but surely some strength in the morning, right? Absolutely. You know, Amazon was strong in the morning. Tesla was strong in the morning. Netflix was strong in the morning. I said, all right, it's just a matter of time. Let's just wait for these confirmations and we should have a very, very big premium day. Da, 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 da. Market started selling off. Did absolutely nothing on that first part of the day. The meat and potatoes turned the day. And not only did we not reclaim the 10 day moving average, we started going back down to Wednesday's low. And this is kind of where we're set up going into Monday's session. We are in a really tight channel, right? Very, very tight channel. And this tight channel is going to be uh, kind of an important area of what happens next. And if you're an investor of the market, again, this has really nothing to do with you. Your long-term investments are going to be fine. Uh, if you're a long-term investor of Google, you're going to be fine. If you're a long-term uh, investor of NVIDIA, you're going to be fine. We're just talking about worst case scenarios. Again, as a trader, your job is always to assess risk. Always, you know, what the, the upper echelon possible potential is, but you also have to know the bottom of the, of the range as well. And this is kind of where we are. If you look at the top of the range here, the cues have been getting stuff around that 379 area, right? That's the top of the range. Okay. People will talk about top of the range breakouts and, and bottom of the range breakdowns. Top of the range is, it just means intervals that a lot of data points are stacking up one by one by one. I usually like to use at least a week's worth of data to kind of validate a channel. And if you look at this channel here, this is about a week's worth of action here. So you see the top of the range here, 379. You see the bottom range here at 373. Something's gonna give this week, right? And the one thing, and I've been doing this for 22 years, as much as I love a bull market, everybody loves a bull market, right? It's, it's just it mentally uh, much more seamless. I, I never wanna use the word easier, but it actually is a little bit easier. I mean, who doesn't love a good bull market? when everything's going nuts, when everything's putting in big candles. But after years and years and years, you realize that price action is just price action. You, you can uh, take advantage of technical analysis. You could take advantage of the other traders' emotions working against them. And you're always looking at the big picture. So what I've been doing for years and years and years, I always play devil's advocate. What happens here, right? What is my worst case scenario here? So I already know that my worst case scenario, if I'm a bull, right? If I'm a perma, perma bull, if I start losing this bottom range here, my worst case scenario is the rising 50 day moving average. Now, before you turn around and say, well, you know, and again, nobody would ever say this that's trading less than, you know, you know, less than 10 years, but I see a lot of new traders very, very arrogant in their opinion. Okay, you'll, you'll, you'll realize really quickly uh, how, how your arrogant opinion doesn't mean anything. But a lot of new traders turn around and say, oh, just buy the dip, buy the dip. Keep this in mind, right? Keep this little channel in mind, 
right? That's exactly what happened with the spies, right? The spies lost this rising support and went to the 50-day moving average. So if you look at the Qs, right? If you look at the Qs, the way they're setting up, they're setting up exactly the same way. So if you're a long-term investor, okay? Again, this doesn't apply to you. But if you're a short-term short trader and you are taking advantage of price action, don't be arrogant enough to naive to think that the Qs cannot follow the spies. And again, there is no fear in the market yet because we've been on such a massive uptrend for the last four and a half years. But again, that goes away very, very quickly if you're sitting there buying, this, you know, buying the dip of your favorite company. And then all of a sudden you get a macro technical sell signal in the market. That little 50 cent move that you say, ah, it's okay, let's buy it, a dollar move, that turns into a $12 candle. And it's happened very, very quickly. Uh, it happens when you are in your most vulnerable moment, your most emotional state, and what's going to wind up happening is you're going to start making emotional decisions. So before that happens is you have to put in the right frame of mind, this is the stock market. The market will go up the same way it's been rallying for generation after generation after generation, but it will have pockets of weakness that, number one, that you have to know as an active trader on that side of the market or an active investor, but the more important is you don't need to be exposed to what's gonna happen after the fact. The, the charts are right in front of you, right? Your warning signs are right in front of you. Your technical areas of support and resistance are right in front of you. Everybody gets exactly the same data every single day at exactly the same time. You can have, you have two choices. You either respect the data or make believe it doesn't exist, right? But unfortunately, when you pretend it doesn't exist and you put the blinders on, unfortunately, when they do technically confirm and there is potential technical damage, you're going to feel the technical damage. So the upside of the market, again, we got 379 on the Qs. The downside of the market is any close below 373. And if we do close below 373 on the Qs, this is not a subjective conversation. Stocks trade from demand to demand, right? Again, just look at the spies, right? They broke the 20, they went to the 50. And again, here's the problem with the spies. You've seen how many times they held the 50? Look, just in the last couple months, once, twice, three times, four times, right? The question going into Monday's session is, is this, are the spies going to confirm down? And if they do confirm down, again, if you believe in the theory, stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, look at your next, you know, look at your next demand zone. You're talking about 10 points on the spies. Now, for now, these are just data points. For now, you could turn to them and say, well, we did hold here, when we did hold here, and we did hold here, and we did hold here. Again, the question is, is this time different, right? It's a very, very fair question. It's a responsible question. I don't care if you're trading for two weeks or 22 years or 28 years, whatever the case may be, or something in between. These are data points that you have to look at every single day after the close and say, is my money safe? Am I exposed? Am I potentially putting myself in a situation that you know, 12 hours from now, I could be looking at a really ugly reality. You don't want to do that. You want to be prepared. And if we do hold the bottom of the channel here, and if we do hold the bottom of the channel of the queues, right, everything will be fine because then we'll start rallying back up. But again, let the market tell you that's what's about to happen. If you're sitting there and just keep on saying, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, yeah, it's worked because the market's been in a tremendous uptrend. But when the market starts to confirm lower levels and you've seen how incredibly aggressive they become, if you go all the way back to May uh, in the queues when they closed below the initial 20 day moving average and then finally lost the, the 50 day, you know, you saw a lot of people on social media, well, cash is a position. You don't need to be cash is in a position. You don't need to be uh, sitting there in the fetal position. You could take advantage of the price action both to the upside and to the downside. But the most important part is be prepared, right? That's the only, that's the greatest gift you can give yourself uh, going into a trading session, going into a trading year, right? Be prepared for anything that could come at you. I'm not saying anything bad. You shouldn't be insulted that the market could potentially go down. I've been through the worst and the most aggressive bear markets in the history, right? 9-11 was the worst, right? It was the absolute worst market in 2001. 2007 through 2009 was terrible. You guys are facing sometimes days that you have two days of selling and it's like the end of the world go two three years of selling and then you talk to me about the appreciation of to be prepared for it nobody told us what was going to happen back then right we had to figure it out now you have so much information at your disposal you have so much um you know you have so much technology at the at the snap of your fingers that you could figure out for yourself what's about to happen next 
And that's our job, just to be prepared of what's going to happen. The problem going into Monday's session is, and again, I don't want to use the word problem. There are some stocks that look pretty good, right? That kind of withheld this uh, sell-off. Um, they brush to the side and they look like they're going high. The problem is there's a lot of names in the same indexes that look like they're about to fall off a planet. Something's got to give here. And again, we don't want to jump the gun coming into Monday. We, again, we want to be prepared. And the most important part is we want to have some longs on deck. We want to have some shorts on deck. And we have to respect technical analysis. Eventually, either 73 falls on the Qs or 79 is going to get reclaimed. And then and only then can we figure out finally where we could finally get some more aggressive and seamless aggression on that side of the market, again, to be determined. So let me give you guys uh, some ideas that look good. Um, you know, look at Peloton. Peloton looks like it's going to, again, have this really aggressive sell-off. And again, you can see how important the 20 going to the 50, just a kind of uh, case in point of what could happen to the indexes. But you see the 20 going to the 50, losing the 50, having a really, really aggressive move down. Again, just a kind of an example of what could happen if the index is confirmed down. But again, here's your first close below the 10-day moving average. Again, the birth of the trade. If Peloton confirms the channel here, you can get a move all the way back down uh, to the bottom of the range. And again, look at a name like Pepsi, right? Same thing here. You got the, yeah, it held the 50-day moving average. If this thing kind of mirrors the indexes and starts building below the 50-day moving average, you got, a, you got some pretty decent move down. Again, you have to be a little more patient uh, with a name like Pepsi, but you definitely have a lot of good-looking potential to the way down. Look at Google, right? Had this monster, monster run, really good monster run. But look how it closed, right? This is the first close here. If this thing confirms, right, right, folks, if we, if we get a pull down in the market and Google confirms, it has room all the way down to 27.30 to the 50-day moving average. It has a lot of room down. NVIDIA, who's been really one of my favorite stocks in the last uh, couple of years, this thing is, again, also one day away from really getting aggressive to the downside. And on the flip side, there are still pretty good setups to the long side as well. So for every name that's been weak to the downside, you know, look at Tesla, right? Look how strong Tesla is. Look at how strong, uh, for example, a name like uh, HZMP is, right? Maybe it's a name a lot of us don't look at on a daily basis, but boy, oh boy, look at this channel here. If this thing confirms this channel here, this thing can really, really, you know, get aggressive to the upside. This snowman has been going nuts. Does anybody even, even does anybody even 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 realize how strong? I mean, a lot of people do, but this stock has been just an absolute on fire. So there is no clear and imminent threat on both sides of the market now we have to actually see which way it confirms and the most important part is again uh you're either putting on a trade or you're putting on your position excuse me i, I want to say it a different way you're either put, you're looking for a trade or you're looking for a career right I, I again i i think a lot of times when you're a brand new trader you're just running wild you, you're still in the honeymoon stage it's all about the action. It's all about the juice, right? It's all about the love affair. As you get older in this business and you, you become uh, more mature and kind of more reserved, you really understand the importance of kind of gathering data to make your, uh, you make your next move uh, very, very important. So if you, if you are moving, you're moving in a way of you have complete conviction of your thought process. And last week, it started out very aggressively and then, yeah, you could pick your spots throughout the week, and there were some pretty de decent ideas. Um, but the point is we had to wait. We had to wait for that confirmation. And the most important part going into this week is we acknowledge this, right? We acknowledge where we are. It's not a, you know, it's not a mystery. It's not a guess. We don't have to hope and pray. The information is right in front of us. We either confirm to the upside, we confirm to the downside. And that's not a situation that we see every single week, but we are definitely faced with that reality going into Monday. So know your levels, understand what you're potentially exposed to, and make sure, again, the most important part of being in business is staying in business. Guys, no surprises, no expectations. Have a great, great Sunday. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.